Hi guys, welcome to the Karam Family Diaries. I just finished filming my 16 week pregnancy update. Um, that will be the video that was up before that. So if you haven't seen that or any of my pregnancy updates, I have a playlist I will link in the iCards. I am 19 weeks pregnant now. This is my 19 week pregnancy update. Did I say that already? I'm really tired. <laughs> um, I am still sipping on my coffee. It's probably gone cold now that I had in the last video. Um, yes, so a lot of things have happened in the last week. It's not the kind of thing I want to really talk about because it's scary and I don't know what the outcome is going to be. Um, I'm going to try not to cry because I already feel myself. I'm like, <laughs> the tears come very easily for me. Um, yeah, so I the reason I want to share this is because I I want to have it documented for myself but I also the first thing I did when this thing happened was I went on to first Facebook forums and um, medical journals um, I like to try and read like medical publications about things when things come up um, and decipher what I can of them um, for me always knowledge is power but really and this is how I started my whole YouTube journey was when I was pregnant with my first baby and I was so sick. Um, if you haven't seen any of my videos, I have hyperemesis gravidarum in all my pregnancies. Um, there is a whole playlist of things explaining everything, all my <laughs> different pregnancy problems. Um, so the, the first thing I, the, what I did was back then, I, that's how I even got into YouTube, watching YouTube um, and watching vlogs and meeting people on YouTube was I was really sick and I was so lonely because I was at home on my own all the time literally going from the couch to the toilet to vomit back to the couch and there was days that I couldn't like I remember texting friends to come and bring me supplies where I couldn't actually drive I was so sick and to go to the car if I had run out of bread or whatever and I could only eat certain things. Yeah, it was just horrific and I felt so isolated and lonely and miserable. Um, and that is how I got onto YouTube. So when this particular thing happened, I went onto YouTube in the first couple of days and was looking for vlogs, pregnancy updates of women that this had happened to, to get some reassurance, to find out what their pathway was, what happened, what, you know, what it meant and I couldn't find anything. I have found videos, like medical videos, explaining to me what it is and what's, but there was no one, um, there was one or two, I think maybe similar-ish things, but not exactly my story. So I thought I'm gonna share it because it's really lonely when something like this happens to you and you just wanna hear someone's story, whether it be good or bad because at least you kind of get an idea of what's going on. So I'm going to keep documenting this and I hope everything will work out okay. Um, and I also, as I said in my last pregnancy update, I want these documented for my daughters as well in case they come out across any of the same issues if they choose to have babies um, when they're older, obviously, <laughs> they're only little there. But when they are of age, if they decide to have babies, um, there's a good chance they're going to have, have high premises um, but if any of these other issues come up I want them to be able to look back and reference this um, I am um, I will have my memory but you know you forget lots of different things so the story is how that was a really long introduction I'll try and cut that down as much as possible um, so I went for my 18 week appointment. I had a, an appointment scheduled for 18 weeks. The day before the appointment, the midwife rang me. Um, I think she was a midwife, um, or she was a nurse certainly, but I think she was a midwife. She rang me and she was lovely, but she was just saying, um, I was quite anxious because I had missed her call a couple of times and I rang the number back and it was the hospital and they couldn't tell me who had rang me. So I had to wait for them to ring me back. But I was like, it's a hospital ring me. It's obviously about either my, about my appointment or something. I was a bit anxious. I was like, what, you know, 
So then knowing that the phone call was coming, I was like, what could this be about? I knew I had an appointment the next day, but... Um, so she finally got me and I was in the middle of a car park with the three kids and I was trying to take the call and trying to get them to stay right beside me. Um, but she said, I'm just ringing you about your appointment tomorrow. And I said, yeah. And she said, by any chance, can your husband come in with you? Um, is he around? And I said, he's not at the minute. He is in Dublin working. Um, and I said, what is, what is it about? And she said, no, there's just from your blood work in your last appointment, some antibodies have shown up and we want to get his blood to sort of, um, check if he has this antigen and it will just be helpful and she said don't worry about it it's nothing to worry about he can come into the next appointment we'll talk about it tomorrow anyway and we'll figure it out uh, but there's nothing to worry about don't worry about it and I was like okay I said like, can I ask what what antibodies showed up and she said yeah it's just the anti-k antibody um she said but it's nothing to worry about she kept saying that she's really really nice um but I was like, okay, all right. Um, so then I went home and I, of course, Googled it, anti-K antibodies, and I pretty much figured out what the story was. So any antibodies, this is basically my understanding of it. Um, and I knew this from being a rhesus negative blood type, I'm O negative, I get anti-D injections in all my pregnancies and afterwards if the baby is a positive blood type um, I'll get the anti-D again. So this is because I think anti-D is the most common one of these things, um, antigen that causes problems and so they have these injections, <laughs> excuse me, basically it stops when, if you give, when you give birth, if the blood crosses over between the mother and baby and they have the positive blood type or the anti antigen um, and I don't have it obviously, then my body will see it as a foreign thing. It will attack it basically and I will develop antibodies against it, <coughs> which at that stage is okay for the first baby, but then if the next baby has them, then my blood supply will attack its blood supply. So the anti-D injection basically, I think, hide, hide the anti-D antigen so that my body doesn't learn to make antibodies against it. So I kind of understood all that. I knew I was getting anti-D in all my pregnancies. So the anti-K is similar to that. Anti-K is the one antigen that I think acts a little bit differently and I think it's the most problematic from my understanding. Um, they don't have an injection that solves it or it, it, it doesn't work that way. Um, so I have developed anti-K antibodies. I went in for my appointment the next day and they scanned me. Um, they, I, it wasn't a scheduled for a scan, it said we've got you on the list, she wants to scan you um, just to make sure that everything's okay. And before she scanned me, I think she told me all of this before she started the scan just in case to prepare me if anything was wrong already. Um, so she, they took all my bloods and everything, she, she brought me in there and she explained the anti-K stuff. She said, Have you, do you know anything about it? And I said, just what I read online. So she kind of explained what I had figured out myself and a bit more. Um, she said that the problem is, so she said basically because you've been transfused, you could have developed a sense, their sensitized become sensitized to it I think that's the terminology from the transfusion but you've had a baby since then and she said but also because of all my babies are the same father it, it kind of should have happened before now anyway I've since read online that um, I've seen some women talking about this who have had well one in particular who has exactly the same story as me so I don't know Oh, I, I suppose it doesn't really matter how it happened but basically she had all her babies the same father four babies she was on her fourth pregnancy her second baby is the one she had the postpartum hemorrhage and was transfused with that's what happened to me and um, she had her third baby no um, no antigens and then the fourth baby the antibodies sorry antibodies antibodies showed up 
that's what's happened to me. Um, so they're kind of a bit confused as to why this can happen, why this has happened now. Um, but I suppose it doesn't really matter. It, it doesn't really change it. It has happened. Um, so uh, she told me that the blood. So basically, the problem is then with my blood cross over the placental barrier, barrier with the baby, and the baby is anti K. Sorry, if the baby is anti K positive. That's when the problems will may may occur. Um, and basically, my blood will attack the baby's blood, may attack the baby baby's blood, um, causing the baby to become anemic and that can be really bad <laughs> um so she, this is she said all this to me before the scan and she said we will monitor the baby very closely to tell to, to keep an eye on the baby she said that there's like um blood flow i don't know if it's a vein or an art, whatever it is um across the top of the baby's head that they measure to see the blood flow from that and that should give them an indicator of whether the baby's okay or it's starting to become anemic. She did say that by the time the baby starts showing signs of being anemic or being sick, they're already very sick. So it's it's very much, they have to act very quickly. And what they will do is give um, in utero, in uterine, I'm not, if the terminology is not like 100%, I apologize. I, I hope you kind of get the gist of what I'm saying. Uh, transfusions. So we basically giving the baby blood transfusions while it's still in my belly. And the aim is to keep the baby in for as long as possible, um, up to a certain point. Um, yeah, so we don't want a preemie baby and we want baby to be healthy. Um, so that is that's what she said to me and she said so we because this is such a serious condition we need to refer you to the specialist unit and that is in dublin so i am still waiting for that appointment but they have talked to them and they know about me and it's yeah i'm i suppose i'm waiting to get in to see a specific specialist um so she said they would check eddie's blood um to determine if he is anti-k positive then the baby may be anti-k positive and if he is negative the baby can't be had that scan that was last week i had that scan and the baby looks perfect um really healthy really good measuring great everything looks structurally great doesn't look anemic um was moving around a lot um head hands up to its head just very very cute very perfect looking um she did say to me that there she said i do have to tell you that there are instances where we can't help the baby enough if this happens and it doesn't make it she said without if the baby becomes anemic and this is this is the case of the baby's anti-k positive if we didn't intervene, the baby wouldn't survive. She said, and then sometimes we can't do enough for the baby to survive. So, obviously nobody wants to hear that. Um, but that's worst case scenario, and I'm trying to not, I'll be honest, that was on a Wednesday. On the Thursday, I cried all day. Um, I was, inconsolable um i basically just cried for most of the day um, i didn't have the kids i was and i lay in bed and i cried and i think i was grieving <laughs> and then i kind of went i think i've gone into the bargaining stage because we are still waiting we're so eddie then came went with me to the appointment um wednesday this week um for his bloods to be taken um, so that takes a while um, to be done um, so then I did find out at that appointment that my antibody levels have doubled um, so they were at a 16 and now they're 32 and I think they go up like that they double um, so I think with anti-k the critical level is four um, so anything beyond that they need to monitor very closely she rang me the the consultant was seeing me and everything um, and then the lady that gave me the ultrasound the first 
the in, the week before um she was really nice she's so helpful um she rang me then that evening and she said i'm just wondering have you heard from hollis street yet which is the national maternity hospital um and i said no she goes well you're on their radar i know they're sorting out your appointment she said but i just wanted to check if they hadn't brought you up yet i'll bring you in tomorrow and do another scan um just while you're waiting just so we can keep an eye on baby while you're waiting to get there so i went in for the other the scan yesterday and baby is still looking really healthy and perfect so that's really good and really positive um so she said that i asked her a few questions then because you know you're taking all this in and then it's afterwards you start thinking so i asked her first of all are our bloods back yet do we know what eddie is and she said no that because of the type of test it is it'll take much uh, you know longer than a day so we're still waiting for that answer and so then i asked her about if eddie is positive if eddie is negative for this can the baby still be positive or is it like no and she said no if if the dad is is negative and you're obviously negative then the baby can't be positive for this anti-k antigen they so the the next question i asked her was what if the baby is anti-k positive is it a thing that the baby is definitely going to become anemic and anemic anemic and definitely going to get sick and she said no she said there is a possibility that the baby could that the blood wouldn't transfer and that the baby could get to full term and maybe only need like jaundice treatment at the end you know under the lights and might not need any transfusions you know she said it might might just be like that um she said that is a possibility she said the fact that your antibody levels are rising does suggest that there is some transference of the blood so uh best case scenario eddie's blood comes back negative for anti-k antigen that's what we're hoping for now um with my antibody levels rising i don't know that's even even possible that outcome um but that's what i'm hoping for um and if not we have a plan we're being referred to the specialist and that monitoring this situation is the most important thing as she said it's more of a problem when you don't know about these kind of things um so you're not watching baby you're not looking out for these things so um i I'm trying to get in in my head to take this one appointment at a time and not um, be worrying about the worst all the time and I suppose with many things I am very good like even with my HD over the years I'm very good at minimizing those things I got that bad <laughs> even when I'm like nearly dying um, but I don't know with this it's a bit different um I think because I'm feeling so good and I know this is completely ridiculous um this is my easiest pregnancy so far so when this news came I was like of course of course something bad was going to happen and then I felt so guilty for being so glad that I wasn't sick this time because obviously I would take that over anything being wrong with the baby and I know it's not related and I know it's completely ridiculous but um that's just where my brain kind of went to um yeah almost feeling guilty for not suffering this time and now there's something that might hurt my baby um but as ridiculous as it is kind of a little bit hard to get my brain to stop thinking like that so um yeah that is the update i didn't cry i know i got a little bit watery eyed <laughs> um so we are just going to take it one appointment at a time and see what happens and hopefully baby will be all fine <coughs> i'm not gonna lie it's, it's it's going to be a lot of monitoring and i think that is like i've had two hospital appointments just this week and i'm wrecked i'm wrecked tired i think the anxiety and worry surrounding it even though i'm trying not not to let myself go too into that i'm it's just it's taxing um and 
yeah I just I feel like we have a long road ahead of us now and I hope that we come out of it at the end um, with a happy healthy baby um, so yeah I just wanted to share that um, because I couldn't find anything about it myself um, when I was looking on YouTube to hear other people's stories so I will keep you guys updated and please positive thoughts and fingers crossed for us that um, it all turns out okay um, I think I'm feeling a lot more positive this week than I was initially I think I even on Wednesday after our second appointment I think we um, we were talking about the, the appointment in the evening me and Eddie and I think we just felt a bit deflated and defeated and yeah I'm trying to bring the energy level up a little bit and be more more positive um that's all we can do really now at this stage uh, we're doing everything we can so thank you for watching and um, please subscribe if you're not already give this video a thumbs up and we will see you in the next one